what's up it's destiny back again with another video and please excuse the glare maybe if i sit back y'all know i just be trying to see i just be trying to see in this world I'm, i need my glasses to see it's been a minute now i will say i did have a video recorded that i was just about to upload but i kind of looked at it and i i'm gonna be honest i didn't like how i looked in the video and so I was like, I'm not recording this. This video was recorded on August 26th, which is my son's birthday. He turned 15, y'all. Can y'all believe it? Let's, let's take a moment. Can we believe that I have a 15-year-old child? I've been a mother for essentially 16 years of my life. What? But it truly is such a blessing to watch my children grow and develop and become their own little people and things of the sort. Um, I'm very, very happy, very, very thankful. Um, <clears throat> so in the video, I was just giving you updates and it was a treatment day as well. So I was wrapping my son's gifts, talking about how treatment is coming up and how I was late for treatment, child, because I didn't want to go. Um, so I could just give you those updates. I don't have treatment until September 16th. Praise God for these breaks. Let's literally just take a moment. Lord, thank you. Okay. Um, I'll start from today and go backwards. So today you can hear my voice. It's kind of like I have a cold. Um, I'm really congested in my nose and have a headache. So they tell you to take Claritin every day. And I literally thought it was only because of when I get the shot to boost my white blood count that my body feels achy, that that is when I needed to take the Claritin every day. But I see that, no, this is for just period. Does it look too so weird with the glare? Okay, I'm going I'm, I'm to try um, to do like this. Um, <clears throat> so I literally just took a Claritin because I've had a headache all week. Today is Thursday, September 5th. Um, I've literally had a headache all week and I thought, well, maybe I'm not drinking enough water. Let me drink enough. Let me drink more water. Maybe I'm not eating enough, which I'm not, but, um, nothing seems to help. So I just took the Claritin and we'll see. It seems to be lifting a little bit. I want to see if it's going to lift this congestion in my nasal cavity. It's also storming outside, just out of the blue, but this is where I live. Storms and showers are expected. So, um, also what I've noticed today is I feel very weak. Like I've dropped things that I wouldn't typically drop. Like I was pouring water into my big water cup and I dropped the water bottle and water got everywhere. And I'm like, why am I dropping this? And then I dropped something else and I'm like, what's going on? So I feel very weak, but for the most part, I feel good. I'm definitely not 100% because of this head congestion situation and feeling weak but um i'm not nauseous i'm not feeling upset stomach none of those type of symptoms at all whatsoever so let's go back excuse the thunder ain't nothing i could i shouldn't really be by this window huh let's 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 speed this up so um Monday, August 26th was a treatment day. I went in very skeptical and anxious because that following weekend, which was Labor Day weekend, the weekend that just passed, uh, was my family reunion. And I wanted to be able to participate in my family reunion. Now, let me tell you, last week, Monday, um, I came home from treatment, very lethargic, very tired, fatigued. Um, I did try to eat a little bit after treatment, but I, that ended up coming up. I spent all of last week sick, barely able to work, barely able to get out of bed. Um, I was throwing up <clears throat> multiple times a day, literally three times a day, every day for last week. My throat was burning due to the acidity from the stomach, you know. Um, I lost my voice for a little bit um, because of that. And my doctor did tell me that is a symptom of the chemotherapy and throwing up, irritating my vocal cords. Um, <clears throat> I did go in Wednesday for hydration and anti-nausea medication. 
I don't think it helped. The anti-nausea did not help because I came home and I threw up two more times. And then I continued to throw up up until uh, Saturday. Um, so it was like, that didn't help. The vitamins probably helped give nutrients into my body, but I still felt very tired. Um, when I went in on Monday for treatment, my blood pressure was like at 87 over 67, super low blood pressure, but I'm not hypertensive. Um, my blood pressure sits lower, period. Like, they have the standard, mine is always lower. It's always been that way throughout my pregnancies, throughout my life that I can recall. My blood pressure is always lower than what they seem as the norm or standard. Um, but she redid it and it went back up to 101, so that was a little better. When I left, my blood pressure was like at 115 or 116, something like that. And that's my baseline. Typically, it's like 115 something. And for me, that is good and normal. Um, my weight, I can't remember my weight. I did not gain all my weight back. I think I was still down about 4 pounds. But it's okay. Um, I don't look... At least to me. I don't look frail. I don't look weak. I don't look like, ooh, we need to help her. Or, ooh, she needs to sit down. Or, ooh, she needs a burger. I don't feel that I look that way. My clothes don't fit properly. Not all of them. Some of them do. Um, but, you know, I'm not really too concerned about that. Because even if I lose, I'm still gaining some. Now, if I was just losing, 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 I would be very upset. But I'll lose and then I gain it back. So, I'm okay with that. Um, I let my doctor know how bad I felt the previous treatment and she was upset that I felt so bad so she gave me the same reduced dose which is 30% reduction um, but we see that still is too much chemo is chemo it is a powerful drug and it, your body you know the inside might be able to handle it but it comes out so I don't know. Um, but yeah, she gave me a reduced dose. I didn't have to fight for it or anything. I was thankful. But I still was very unwell that whole week. Um, and my prayer was just, I want to feel good enough to be around my family for the family reunion. Because I have not seen my family in about two years. Definitely haven't seen a lot of people since this diagnosis. And I just want to be loved on. I just wanted to be in the midst, you know. I just wanted to be around people that care about me and that love me, you know. Not to say that the people that I'm around currently don't do that, but it's just being around my, my other family and having those conversations, I just really needed that. And I thank God I was able to do that. So, <clears throat> let's see. Um, I did have my nails. I had press-on nails done. Um, but my doctor told me to take them off. She Well, she gave me till after the family reunion. She's like, after your family reunion, take them off and just stay away from the nails until we're done with this. And she told me that um, although I do my nails at home, they can still get infected. And she has a patient that does her nails at home. Her nails are infected. All 10 of her nails and pus is coming out. That scared me. So I came home. I think it was probably either that... Yeah, probably the same day as treatment before I went to sleep, I took my nails off because it's like, I'm not trying to get infected. I don't need anything else going on unnecessarily, you know. So I did take off my press on nails, but um, like she said, when this is done with, I'm going to put them back, baby. I probably won't go to the salon for a while because these press on nails are pretty good. Maybe I'll do a video about that. If y'all want to see, leave a comment below. Um, but my nails are growing back. I don't want to show you up close because I'm still kind of, um, I can say it, I can, I'm a little insecure about my nails because they're, they're healthy to be going through what I'm going through, but they're not as healthy as they typically are. I've always had beautiful long nails and although they're growing back, um, the nail beds, I just, I'm not showing y'all up close. Um, what else did I discuss with my doctor? Oh, my hands. I don't know if y'all can tell it might not look different to y'all because y'all probably never saw the palm of my hand but to me it looks darker the palm of my hand looks darker around my cuticles look darker um, my nail bed on my thumbs have a black portion and even on my yeah 
almost on all of my nails I have like something black on them and she said all of that discoloration is due to the chemotherapy and once chemo is done it will go away so I'm so thankful for that I get a rash on my arm yeah I have it now probably can't see little bumps um she's saying that that is due to eczema and me having a flare up with eczema because I do have eczema I've had it since I was born with it um and as an adult it flares up when I'm stressed and I have been extremely stressed um these past couple weeks a lot of things in personal life health this health diagnosis alone is enough to stress you out literally every day work has been stressful but um today is a good work day um what else i'm sorry i'm saying um a lot because i just don't want to miss anything on this update video but let's see i'm still anemic but i'm not as bad to where i need a blood transfusion so not gonna say that's good but it's good i don't need a blood transfusion but it's still not the best um i did not faint although i felt like i probably did faint last week I just went to sleep and that's probably not good. I need to call the doctor and call 911 when I feel like I'm about to faint. What I'm learning is that I am so independent to a fault to where I'm not reaching out for help the way that I should be when it comes to like me feeling unwell. Like even today, I probably should have called out of work and stayed in bed all day. Because this headache has been going all week. Yesterday, I was supposed to go in for hydration. But I canceled because the time was too close to picking up my son from school. And also, I had so much work. And I had meetings with work. And I didn't go. Which I should have gone. My mom was like, girl, don't miss no appointments. Because you're talking about work. Work is important, yes. But your health is way more important. So I, I'm learning that I can't put stuff off and think that, oh, it'll be okay because I'm not in a typical normal situation. I'm fighting cancer. And I literally have to remind myself that sometimes. And sometimes I have to remind the people around me, like, where the grace at, baby? You're not dealing with someone that's feeling 100%. I am fighting a disease that takes people's life literally every day every day is a fight internally in my body but this chemo this cancer all the things is literally a fight it's literally a fight in my mind every day to get up to have the will to fight to get up to go to treatment to go to these appointments to listen to my body it literally is a fight I shouldn't be fighting with nobody else I shouldn't have any other issues anywhere else because this is where my focus needs to be. And stress, cancer, illnesses, diseases, things like that feed off of stress. So if I'm stressed, if my body is stressed, all I'm doing is giving points to the opposite team. That's not what we're here to do. So I'm learning to be better with that. Um, I want to tell you about my family reunion because I did not pick up the camera. And I, I contemplated so bad about this because I'm like, I want to document. First, I want to document it. That's typically what it's all about. I want to document it, but I also want to share with y'all are my people. I want to share with my people, my family, because I just love my family so much. And it was beautiful. So it was in town where I live. And um, the first night we had a fish fry at my uncle's house. So everybody met at my uncle's house. And that I will say was kind of overwhelming because I didn't know who all because I wasn't too involved with the planning or like the updates or anything with it because I've been sick. So I was so surprised when I saw all those people at my uncle's house. I was like, Oh my god, I'm a little overwhelmed. Like, whoa, but it was a good thing. Um, I did not wear my mask which is not a good thing because I was still in that week of the danger zone, as I call it, where my white blood count is really low and my immune system is super compromised. I should have been wearing a mask, but I did not. Um, I stayed outside. I did do that. But then when I was overwhelmed with the heat and overwhelmed with, oh my God, all these people, all these kids, you know, all these relatives that I've never met before because a lot of relatives that never came to family reunions 
came to this one. So it's people I I never met before, you know. And so that was really cool. That was really beautiful. So we did that. And afterwards, there was a concert, like a um, tribute concert to Whitney Houston. So me and my boyfriend and my sister and her fiance and my other family, because it was right next to the hotel that we were all staying at, we went there. It was a cool tribute concert. I enjoyed it. I love Whitney Houston, okay? Say what you want about her. That lady can sing. Okay, and so um, I really, really enjoyed that. Then we just hung out with family in the room, talking, joking. We did a food run because we were hungry because we stayed up so late. Um, then the next day was our, like, beach day. So we were out on the beach, and I was like, child, I don't know. And Friday, I was not 100%, but I wanted to push through because I wanted to be there to see my family. Um... And I even told, like, my aunt, she's like, well, you look good. You look good. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm, you know, I'm pushing through today. And I and I did. And I don't want to encourage anyone to push through because pushing through could be detrimental to you depending on your condition, depending on what's going on with you. Cancer or not, you shouldn't push through. If you need to take a nap, take a nap. Listen to your body. I just didn't. Um, but... My thing is, something happened, I'm surrounded by family. Somebody going to save me, you know? But, um, again, that's not really the mindset to have. And I'm sure Dr. Lay and Susan would not approve of that. But um, that happened. But Saturday was the beach day. And I was like, I don't know how long I could be out in the sun because it's so hot. And I get fatigued and, you know, all the things. But it ended up being a really good beach day. I I put on the sunscreen. My sister bought me this really big hat that I had on. Um, and I stayed mostly in the water because it tends to be cooler closer to the water. People don't know. They're like, oh, the beach is hot. Put them feet in the water. You're going to cool down. Stay up on that sand. Yeah, you're in the Sahara Desert for sure. So I mostly stayed by the water. And plus, my youngest son loves the water. He is a baby guppy. And so um, that it was really fun, really cool. I wasn't able to really participate in like the the relay races or the the strenuous activities that they did because I did not want to pass out. I did serve food um, because we're the host family and I wanted to do my host duties and that also gave me opportunity to really see everybody and hey how you doing? That I heard something. Oh yeah I did my phone. Um, and things of the sort. So that was really good, really cool, really fun. Um, and then later, see, we were going to this um, restaurant that, a Polynesian restaurant, and it has a show. But the whole time, it has been sold out. So I couldn't get tickets. My kids had tickets, but me and my boyfriend didn't have tickets. And I was like, God, we can't go. But my cousin was like, my daughter is stuck at the airport. I'm about to go. If you want to get my ticket, you can get my ticket. So it worked out. I was able to go to the Polynesian restaurant and see the show, which was so cool. I learned so much about Polynesian culture, um, the different islands, the different people, the hakas. We all love the hakas, do we not? Like the hakas will bring you to tears, okay? I just love um, when cultures embrace their culture out loud and don't feel like they have to conform to the Western society. They stay who they are and they are who they are. And I love that and I appreciate that so much. So the food, and I'm not talking about all Polynesian food, baby. I'm talking about at that particular restaurant was mid. We just go say it was mid. The meatballs were good. The rice was tolerable. And that's just because I'm a rice girl. You know, born in Japan. Rice is everything to me. Okay? Um, but the other stuff... The, the chicken was... The chicken was okay. It was edible. Everything else... Trash. Trash. And I'm not going to name the name of the Polynesian restaurant because I really enjoyed the people. Um, we went up there and took a picture with the... Um, the dancers, the male and female dancers, and my youngest son, he had a question because they were, you know, doing fire breathing and stuff. And so he wanted to go up there and ask the guy, you know, how did he do that and how long did it take for him? So it was just an overall really cool, really family friendly, family oriented experience. I enjoyed it so much. Um, and my aunt, she just 
brought me to tears because she's like, I'm just so glad to see you out and about and living your life, girl. She's like, live your life, Des. Like, no matter what's going on, no matter what, you have to live your life. And you have to enjoy it. So do what you want to do, but live your life. And it just brought me to tears because when I'm feeling those moments of... And because she saw last week where I was sick, she had to pick up my son for me, you know? So she saw it firsthand and she was like, it makes her so sad to see me in that state. But she's like, she's so happy that I'm still living and not conforming or not giving in to this diagnosis that I have to fight. So that made me feel really good and um, it breathed fresh air into me. Um, later that night, I will say it was it was some complications. <laughs> it was some complications, but not with my family. Nothing to do with the reunion. Outside factors. Um, Sunday, people were leaving. Um, so we said goodbye to a couple people. Um, but me and the family, we went to brunch. Um, then we came back. What did we do after brunch? We went to brunch. Then we went back to the hotel. I took a nap because I needed a nap. They went down and they were talking and stuff. Then I met up with them. We walked the pier. We walked the boardwalk. We was by the water. Then we went back to the room talking a little bit. They were like, let's go to dinner. We went to dinner. We enjoyed a nice dinner at a, rest a local restaurant. Then we came back, went to the pool. Um, cause the boys wanted to get in the pool. So let the boys get in the pool and then they went up to the room and then we went to my aunt's room and that, that I will say was one of my favorite parts of the family reunion. Just being with my mom and my aunts and my sister and just having girl time and just talking about everything. One of our cousins from Detroit came in and we're talking with her and that was probably one of my, I like intimate moments. I mean, I love when everyone is around, but I like, let's pull a couple of us to the side and talk. Pull someone else to the side and talk. I like those one-on-one, -on -one, small, intimate moments. And that, it, I just absolutely love that. That was one of my favorite parts of the family reunion, honestly. Then the next day was Monday, Memorial Day, or Labor Day, I'm sorry. And that was checkout day. So that's when we... um slowly woke up and checked out and went on about our day and went on about our business now I will tell you um one of my cousins she is you know we want to be technical she's like my second cousin she's my mom's first cousin my second cousin whatever she's my cousin she had her battle with breast cancer she has been it'll be 10 years for her cancer free in January and so um, I talked to her Monday and I was like, you know, I should have reached out to you in the beginning. Like, what was I thinking? Well, I thought that I had people that were like going to be a mentor for me and it just did not work out that way. But um, talking to my cousin, she wanted to know my story, how I came to know the diagnosis, you know, all the steps that happened, what's going on, what stage I'm in, what am I planning to do for the future, you know, all the things. She wanted to know all the things, child. So I told her all the things, and then she shared with me. Hers was her two positive, I believe. Same, right breast, basically the same. She just, something just told her to just feel her breast, and she felt it, and she felt the lump, and her husband encouraged her to call the doctor. You know, same kind of thing, same steps and things like that. I think her treatment plan was a little different because that was like 10 years ago. But, um, you know, here we are. And she, and you know what? And even back then, 10 years ago, I may not have known at the exact moment that she was going through her cancer, cancer, cancer battle. But for my whole entire life that I have known her, she has always looked good. She has always been in a positive attitude positive state of mind positive like I just I've always loved her I love all my family I've always loved her she always looks good her hair is always laid outfits on point you know what I'm saying always like that if you would see her you would have never known at that time that she was going through that and now that she went through that and what she shared with me is that she had no symptoms she said that she had a friend that was telling her all the doom and gloom of cancer and she was like I I don't want to hear it. I rebuke it. That ain't happening to me. And she said she had no symptoms. I'm like, what? She's like, the nails turning black. 
didn't happen. Feeling sick, throwing up all the time, didn't happen. I'm like, God bless you. God bless you. And so she breathed fresh air into my lungs and she gave me a new perspective and a new outlook on this. And I'm so glad that I can just pick up the phone and, hey, I'm having a bad day. Hey, I'm having a beautiful day. Hey, it's treatment, you know, and it's someone that really cares about me. Someone that really loves me, you know, because we're blood. We've known each other all my life, you know, so that I just really appreciate her so much because I have reached out to people and all I did get was the doom and gloom. The moment they see me, yeah, you're going to lose all your hair, girl. What? That's not something that you want to tell a young woman who just got this diagnosis. Yeah, you finna lose it all. You know, it, it just wasn't something I would do. And I really hope that with me sharing my story, although I want to be very authentic, I want to let you know what I'm experiencing. You might not experience that. We can see my cousin did not. I was going to call her my auntie. We can see my, my cousin didn't experience it. So everyone's not going to experience everything, but I want to be very authentic and true to my story um, and let you know what's going on with me. But, um, yeah, I have a whole new outlook, and I know it's because I'm feeling good. And when treatment comes around again, I'm probably going to be feeling sad, and I'm going to be feeling unwell, but I'm going to do my best to keep a positive mindset. And it's okay to give yourself grace. It's okay to not have a good day. It's okay to be sad. It's okay to have those moments, especially while you're going through cancer. You're dealing with cancer. And even if you're not, you're dealing with whatever you're dealing with, and you deserve grace. Okay, and that's what I said. Um, child, I deserve to be treated like a princess. I don't care. I don't care. I'm dealing with too much. Treat me with care. Treat me with, with white gloves. You know what I'm saying? Like, treat me gently. That, that's what I ask from everybody. If it's not love, if it's not positivity, if it's not trying to encourage me, if it's not trying to lift me up, I don't want nothing to do with it. I don't care who it is. I don't care what it is. I don't care where it is. I'm not going to be involved. This fight is too important. And like my cousin was saying, and like I always say, we are co-creators with God. Okay? And in this battle that I'm fighting with God, I have dealt with and I've been through more than I should have. And my foot is in the sand or my foot is on the ground and it's not happening no more. And that pertains to any and everything. Even work. Harassing me. I ain't dealing with it no more. <laughs> you know? So it's just, um, and people can say, oh, you're just trying to use it as an excuse. I don't care what it is. Cancer is an excuse. Battling stage three cancer is an excuse. Yes, it is. Treat me right. Treat me good. Be nice to me. Be kind to me. And like a friend told me, remember who's there. Remember who's there. Remember who showed up when you needed them the most. There's a lot of people who said that they would be there and they're not. And that's fine. And for whatever reason, it's whatever reason, you know. But I'm going to cherish and be thankful and show gratitude to the people who are there. I've had people who've... Um, I know through mutual people that I've been there more than the people I know them by. Like this girl, Kat, we talk almost every day. And we don't even really know each other. I know her because of other people. Them other people ain't nowhere near around. They don't give a fuck about what I'm dealing with, but she do. A friend that I had from years ago, we reconnected maybe like last year about homeschooling stuff. But ever since then, again at least once a week, a couple times a week. You know what I'm saying? The people who want to be there for you are going to be there for you. You're not going to have to ask. You're not going to have to beg. You're not going to have to plead. You're not going to have to do anything. The people who want to be there for you will be there for you. And remember that. And show gratitude for that. And show love for that. And I'm just so thankful. And I, it's not trauma bonding. It's just, I'm here for you, sis. Whatever you need. However you need it. I'm here for you, sis. And I don't take none of that for granted. I don't take none of the things, none of the good comments that y'all send my way, none of the good messages that y'all sent. Okay. 
All right, the camera died because the internal battery was too hot or the internal temperature was too high or whatever. Um, I done went and picked up the little one from school. So I'm going to go finish the rest of my day. I'm sorry, I don't remember what I left off at. But basically what I was saying is that um, go with the lovers. Go with the lovers and stay. I always say that, and that is what I'm going to do. Um, but like I said, I'm going to wrap this up. Still got this little headache congestion situation. I took a Claritin. Um, waiting for that to kick in. I'm, I probably should go to hydration tomorrow since I canceled Wednesday um, because I feel like maybe that's what's going on. And like, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but I did. I dropped the water bottle and I dropped something else. So I'm feeling weak. But I don't feel sick. Like, I'm not feeling the nausea, the stuff like that. But I am, um, I don't know, dropping stuff. And that's really weird because I typically don't drop stuff normally. And um, this congestion situation is so irritating. So hopefully this Claritin kicks in and works. And um, we're going to be doing better. I'm going to be doing better. I say this every video. I'm going to record more. I'm going to post more. And then I don't. I am I'm going to do better. Honestly, I really am. I'm going to pick up the camera on the good moments and maybe I won't show everything because I want to keep a private situation about myself, but I do want to share with the people. And I don't want to just share cancer. I want to share all the good things that's going on in life as well. So, um I'm going to be more mindful that I got therapy. And I had to cancel last week because I was so sick. I couldn't even be on a Zoom call with her. I was like, can we reschedule? Um, and thankfully, she's so understanding. I, I love... And this is what I'm saying. Be open to meeting your tribe or meeting the people that are for you. And maybe it took this bad situation for me to reconnect or to connect with some really good people and I'm really thankful and that's God's way of showing me that he loves me by having me in contact with really good people and I'm so thankful and so appreciative um I love my doctor Dr. Lay I love my nurse Susan I love my therapist Z I'm not gonna shout out all the individuals in my life because it'll be too many and then the camera gonna overheat again but I'm so thankful for everyone who takes time out of their day to think about me to think about my boys to send me um nice comments to send me prayers to pray for me to send me positive vibes to send me healing energy i appreciate you guys so much more than you will ever really truly know and more than i can show back to y'all so again i thank you just so very much um supposed to be a football game later tonight i don't know if that's happening because it's been storming all day the field might be soaked I just text my son and I'm like, are y'all still having a game? Like, let me know what's going on so I can know what to do. I'm also probably going to cook dinner. Child, spaghetti and meatballs, okay? Um, something easy and quick um, and that will last, you know, we'll have leftovers for tomorrow as well. But um, I'm going to wrap this up. Thank you so much. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Like this video. Leave a comment. Comment whatever. Something nice, you know, positive. Good vibes over here, twin, you know, all the good things only. Um, but yeah, thumbs up, comment, subscribe. And if you love someone, tell them I love you all.